Good morning and welcome to worship. We are so glad to have you with us on this, the first Sunday of Advent. We begin this morning with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God, and wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven, and you are free. Free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened by God's love, comforted by God's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to join us in singing hymn number 248, People Look East. Remember the prophecy of long ago, words spoken in promise of a child coming, a new king who would restore God's people and fill them again with hope. The child was coming. The king was coming. But it wouldn't be like anyone expected. He wouldn't be born in a palace and wear a golden, a golden crown. No, instead, he would come to a young girl and a carpenter and would be born in a stable. We know the story. We know what happened. Yet each Advent, we find ourselves waiting for Jesus to come to us. This year, we need him more than ever and soothe to soothe our weary souls 
and fill us with hope. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins, and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's scripture is from Micah 5, beginning at the second verse. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall live secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> According to St. Matthew, the first chapter, Glory to you, O Lord. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, 
For the co child conceived in her womb, in her, is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's been a while since I first started thinking and planning for the season of Advent. As I've discovered, planning for anything this year has been tricky. But as I was thinking about Advent, the desire, I had a strong desire to lighten things up a little bit. So I came up with the idea to take a look at the gospel, the good news, according to Christmas movies, where we will take some time each week to explore some favorite Christmas movies and realize that they may have more meaning for us than just spreading a little bit of Christmas cheer. So our first movie up is the 1954 classic White Christmas, starring Bing Crosby, Danny Kaye, and Rosemary Clooney. The first time I ever saw White Christmas, I was young. My mom and I were making Christmas cookies and we decided that to see if there was anything on the one of the four channels that we got on our TV. And my mom was excited to find White Christmas. And so we watched as we made our cookies. It was a movie that my mom had vividly remembered from her youth, especially the red dresses worn by the ladies at the end of the movie. The singing and the dancing and the story captured my imagination, and it quickly became a favorite movie of mine, and it's a movie that I pull out every year to watch. Often, I try to watch it with my mom. If you aren't familiar with the story, it revolves around two men who, after serving in the army during World War II together, become successful Broadway stage producers and performers. They are the duo of Wallace and Davis. They meet up with two sisters who are also performers and who are on their way to perform at an inn in Vermont over the Christmas holidays. And because Davis wants his workaholic partner to slow down a little bit and realizes that one of the sisters has caught Wallace's eye, Davis makes sure that they all end up on the same tra train heading north. Before too long, the guys decide to forego their plans in New York and continue on to Vermont, where the sisters are going to be performing. Now, the movie is a musical, and so much to my husband's chagrin, they break out into song periodically. And on the train from Florida to Vermont, the four of them begin to sing about how much fun it will be to see and experience the snow. The expectation is that they will have a wonderful time in the snow and it will be a white Christmas. So imagine the disappointment that they have when they arrive and there is no sight of snow. The weather, is, the weather temperature is so moderate and so tempered that they don't even need to wear their coats. As a result of the lack of snow, the inn where they are scheduled to perform is doing a terrible business. And they discover that the innkeeper is the retired general that Wallace and Davis served under during the war, a man for which they have great loyalty and admiration. The general had expected that life in retirement as an innkeeper in Vermont would be everything that he wished and it would be completely fulfilling. But we learn over the course of the movie that retirement is not what he expected and he is looking for any way he can to get back into the army. As I was thinking about this movie, I was thinking about the problem with expectations. Expectations are funny things. So often when looking forward to something, we build it up in our minds to the point where we are certain it will turn out a particular way and that people will do certain things or we will get certain gifts. 
And then when the reality comes, we often find ourselves disappointed because whatever we're doing has not lived up to our expectations. The birth of Jesus had been prophesied for hundreds of years before it would actually happen. The promise was a king. The promise was a child who would rule and be an even greater ruler than King David, the greatest king Israel had ever known. The promise was that the child would come from Bethlehem and he would save the people and he would be Emmanuel. God is with us. For the 400 years before the birth of Jesus, the prophets had been silent. The Greeks and Romans had entered and conquered the little nation of Israel. And while the people continued to practice their faith, they also waited and wondered about when the king would come. They had expectations for what life would be like when he did come. They would get their land back. They would become a great nation again. They would overthrow their oppressors. And individuals within that nation also had expectations about their own lives. For Joseph, a simple carpenter from the village of Nazareth, he was expecting to set, spend a beautiful life with the girl he was betrothed to, a young girl from his village who would soon be his wife named Mary. And his expectations crashed down around him when she turned up pregnant. Everything changed. Joseph had some options when it came to how he could best deal with Mary. He could go through with the wedding and raise another man's child. He could make a big stink about her being pregnant, which would then lead to a scandal which quite possibly could lead to her death or he could keep things quiet and officially break the contract that he had entered into for their marriage. Being an honorable man, he decided to go the quiet route and was planning to divorce her. However, the angel came to him and changed his mind. And he realized that things with Mary weren't quite what he had expected. He realized that more was happening with this child than what he initially had thought. So he went ahead and took her as his wife, knowing that he would be her husband and her protector. And he would also take on the responsibility of raising this child with her and being the earthly father that Jesus would know. When the time came, they traveled to Bethlehem, and Mary's son, who was now also Joseph's son in so many ways, showed up in the most unexpected of places. And throughout his life, he rarely did anything that was expected of him. He was the king born in a stable. He did come to save the people and set them free from oppression, but they were set free from the bondage of sin and death. And he wasn't really concerned about the territory of their nation. Instead, he was concerned with the entire kingdom of God, including what was beyond that time and that place. Jesus wasn't what was expected. And truth be told, there were plenty who were very disappointed by that. They wanted him to be like King David was and he didn't really live up to their expectations. However, for us, generations later, we see that instead he far exceeded the expectations of what God was really doing as God worked in the world to redeem all of God's people. In the White Christmas movie, when it was clear that the lack of snow was harming the flow of Taurus to Vermont and the welfare of the inn, Wallace and Davis arrange for their entire show to come to the inn to practice and stage a brand new show, which will then debut in hopes that it will bring significant business to the inn and be helpful to the general. The lack of snow ends up leading to something else, including a little romance among the characters. Their time in Vermont, which began with such disappointment, ends up exceeding their expectations 
and becomes a reunion and a tribute to the general, a true American hero. So what does that say to us? Those of us who are so weary of words like masks, COVID, social distancing, shutdowns, taking pauses, staying home, and hand sanitizer, the expectations of our holiday are uncertain. It's unlikely that this holiday season is going to be what we would want it to be. After Thanksgiving, we may have discovered that Christmas isn't going to meet our expectations. We're going to miss some of our traditions. We're going to miss some of our family members. We're going to miss being here in church in the traditional way that we always have been. We're going to miss the parties with friends that and the end of the year lunches with boards and coworkers. It's likely that Christmas is not going to meet our expectation of normal or traditional this year. We are sad for that, and we grieve what we've always had. But one of the things that both White Christmas and Joseph's story remind us of is that even when there is disappointment, there is also hope. Because so often when we let go of whatever our expectations might be about anything, not just Christmas, we discover that we may find something that far exceeds what we expected and maybe even what we had even hoped for. But letting go of anything, especially expectations, isn't an easy thing to do. We traditionally have a very busy Advent season here at Holy Cross. An Advent tea for the ladies, the live nativity, a children's program, lots of decorations. And while all of those things will still happen, they will happen differently this year. And no, they aren't going to be the same this year. And I think most of that not being the same is going to center in the fact that we simply will not be able to be together as much. So these things probably won't be as wonderful as they usually are, but they will still be wonderful in their own special way. I don't know if the trick to making all of this easier is to try to lower our expectations for this season, or if it is better to let go of them completely so we are free to embrace the things that God does have in store for us. Things to learn, perspective to gain, different ways of communicating with loved ones, time for busy families to step back and take a deep breath, time to focus on the reason for the season. One thing I've noticed is that while fellowship that we've wanted to do with and among each other has been sorely lacking in these months of pandemic, what hasn't suffered at all has been Holy Cross's service to the community. The angel tree to buy the gifts for struggling families at our local schools is now empty. All of the angels have been taken and there are plenty of packages under the tree thanks to your generosity and kindness. A few weeks ago, we exceeded our goal for purchasing turkeys for some of those same families. And we had nearly 50 people support the change of Thanksgiving meal for those at the Silver Sage properties. Quilts got delivered, knitted items got made, Halloween treats got distributed, toiletries got collected and delivered. And as I speak, families are already collecting items for our Advent food donation. Yes, fellowship is not what it was, but we haven't missed a beat when it comes to offering care for our community. Maybe we've even exceeded what we thought we could do. And maybe serving our neighbors during this time of pandemic has been something important that God has called us to do during this time. At the end of White Christmas, during the big finale, the cast sings the wonderful song, White Christmas. The guys are in their Santa suits and the women are in those incredibly vibrant red dresses with the white muffs around their hands. And they open up the back door of the stage and of course, it's snowing. 
It is indeed a white Christmas, and there is a happy ending. Of course it is. It's a Christmas movie meant to bring cheer and happiness and help us to dream about the possibilities. I don't know what each of us are dreaming about as we think about Christmas this year. Peace on earth, vaccines, sugar plums dancing in our head, a white Christmas, which I, as a California kid, still think are super cool. But I know that in whatever we are dreaming about, that God loves each one of us and knows the deep desires of our hearts. I do hope that as we enter into this season, your Christmas is like the one you used to know. I hope that your Christmas season is merry and bright, and that it is merry with the joy that comes through the Emmanuel, the God who comes to be with us. And I hope it's bright by the light of that same Christ child who offers his light to each of us and to the world in the darkest of times. Amen. for everyone in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. 
Help us during this difficult time in our world to adjust our expectations of what this holiday season might mean for us. Ease the disappointment and loneliness we feel. Help us to continue to find new and creative ways to care for one another and for our family and friends. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, thawing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, and long-lasting droughts. Renew the face of the earth and our relationship to it. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed, with welcome for those who are excluded, with relief for those who suffer. Bring healing to all those who have COVID-19 or have been exposed to it, and strengthen and protect all healthcare workers who are working to help bring about healing. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for people who are in crisis as the seasons change, for those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, for those in poverty or facing food insecurity. Relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, and ease their minds. Bless the work of Shared Harvest and the Northern Nevada Food Bank and all ministries that work to feed the hungry. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for the people in our families and congregation who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses. Especially today, we pray for Roland, Wilma, Jan, Mona, Susan, Kathy, Helen, and others we name out loud or in the silence of our hearts at this time. Ease their suffering and support them when they struggle. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. As we move into our Holy Communion, I would like to remind you that if you have elements that you've picked up from the church, you may go ahead and get those ready. If you are watching at home, we will offer a blessing um, for any bread and wine or uh, crackers and grape juice that you might have that you want to use as a reminder of Christ's presence with you. <clears throat> In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As you eat the bread or your cracker or your wafer, may you know that this is the body of Christ given for you. And as you drink your wine or your grape juice, may you know that this is the blood of Christ that is shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, 
that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I have just a couple of announcements before we send you on your way. First of all, I would like to remind all of the ladies who regularly come and take part in the ladies' tea, uh, the Advent Tea, that this afternoon from 1 to 3, um, the Advent Tea Committee has prepared a special gift uh, for you to come by the church and pick it up. Uh, that will be between 1 and 3 this afternoon. If you are unable to come, we will have a, uh, an Advent Committee team of elves coming to deliver them, deliver the gift to you. So please don't worry too much, but if we can save uh, some energy and some time from those ladies, uh, we'd love to come and see you as you pick up your, your um, Advent tea goodie bag. Um, also, I wanted to let you know that poinsettias are still uh, up for sale. Uh, if you would like to make a contribution to the poinsettias, they will be decorating the church in the coming weeks. As you can see, the tree is decorated as well as uh, some of the other places around the congregation, around the church. Um, and so uh, we've not gone all out this year, but we've certainly done some of our, some of our favorite traditions here. Um, also, I wanted to let you know that next week we'll be talking about the movie Miracle on 34th Street. There are two versions of it. One is, I think, was I think was made in the 1930s with Natalie Wood as the little girl, and then the um, the other version was made in the 1990s. So either version is perfectly acceptable. I personally love them both. Um, so you're invited to watch them this week if you get an opportunity. Um, also, I also want to let you know that uh, Elise will be in the office this week. I will be working from home for most of the week as I was around a couple too many people maybe at Thanksgiving. So I'm going to lay low and, uh, and keep myself away from, from any, uh, any possibility of spreading anything that I'm pretty sure nobody had. But you never know. So uh, I'm going to be cautious and safe. Uh, and I hope that all of you are doing well and also being cautious and safe at home as well. As you go this morning, may I offer you this blessing. May the creator of the stars bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior fill you with love. The unexpected spirit guide your journey now and forever. Amen.
May you go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I pray all of you have a wonderful week. We will see you again soon.